This might sound strange, but it's true. You can get stones which form in your tonsils. Now, tonsil stones are stones which can form at the back of the throat within the tonsils. They're not serious, but they can sometimes cause problems like a sore throat or bad breath. And in this video, we're going to cover the following topics, all of which are time stamped and split into chapters. So first of all, what exactly are the tonsils and what are tonsil stones? Well, the tonsils are the soft lumps at the back of your throat, usually one at each side. They are lymph nodes which sometimes enlarge to help fight infections. Now, tonsil stones, otherwise known as tonsilloliths, are a white or yellow accumulation of debris at the back of the throat. They tend to occur in people who have large or what we would describe as craggy tonsils. Now, they look like small white, yellow, or even pale gray pebbles. You usually find them in the nooks and crannies of the tonsils. So what causes tonsil stones? Well, tonsil stones are made up of minerals, mainly calcium salts. Now, debris from the surrounding cells, tissues, and bacteria gets stuck in the crevices of the tonsils, and then it hardens or becomes calcified. Now, they can be hard like tiny little rocks, or they can actually be quite soft. They're usually quite small, but they can sometimes get bigger. Now, it's important to know that they are not cancerous growths and they are not attached to the tissues around them, but instead they are stuck in the crevices of the tonsils, meaning that they can come out quite easily. Now, actually, interestingly, tonsil stones can help the body's immune system by blocking bacteria and viruses from entering the body. They can occur at any age, but they are more common in adults than in children. Now, some people just develop one, whereas other people can have more than one at a time. And some people, when they get rid of one, another one forms somewhere else in their tonsils. So they can be quite annoying and quite pesky. So if you keep getting tonsil stones, why might this be the case? Well, some people are just more prone than others to developing tonsil stones. But some risk factors can include smoking, poor oral hygiene, recurrent tonsil infections, as well as having tonsillar crypts. These are the grooves and folds that you can sometimes see in the tonsils, and they're more common in larger, or what we call craggy looking tonsils. Now, in terms of symptoms of tonsil stones, well, often there are no symptoms at all, but when they do occur, they can include a feeling of something being stuck at the back of the throat, bad breath, which is also known as halitosis, a slight discomfort in swallowing, maybe a bad taste in the mouth, an irritating cough, or actually even an earache. And that's because sometimes a problem that's in the mouth can then radiate or spread to the ear due to the way that the pain signal is carried along nerves. Now, usually tonsil stones can be seen at the back of the mouth and no special tests are needed, but actually sometimes you can also coincidentally see them on x-rays or scans, which have been done for other reasons. So you probably want to know how do you get rid of tonsil stones? Well, thankfully, in many cases, tonsil stones can be easily removed at home and treatment from a doctor or nurse is not necessarily needed, especially if there are no symptoms. So here are some options that you could consider trying. Firstly, the most simple one is a salt water gargle. So try gargling with a mouthwash or a salty water mix, and this might dislodge the tonsil stones from the back of your throat. The next option is something that's called a gentle irrigation. Now this involves gently shooting water at the back of the mouth to try and dislodge the tonsil stones. Now it's possible to buy a syringe specifically for this purpose, which has got a curd tip or an irrigation kit. And I've included some links in the description box of this video where you can get them from places like Amazon. Now, if you do choose to use this option, it is important to follow the instructions carefully because it's possible to damage the tonsils if you apply too much force. And also this option can cause things like pain and bleeding. So you need to be careful if you do try this. The next option is cotton swabbing. So this involves gently massaging around the tonsils with a cotton swab like a Q-tip, and that can push or dislodge the tonsil stone loose. Finally, there is the option for surgical removal. So an ear, nose and throat or ENT surgeon can remove tonsil stones, which are causing problems, but this will only be done if the tonsil stones are either large in size, painful, or they're causing repeated bacterial infections and sore throats. Finally, how do you prevent tonsil stones from occurring in the first place? So firstly, I would say good oral hygiene always helps with preventing tonsil stones. So brush your teeth twice a day and try to floss in between the teeth to stop any debris accumulating daily. 
You could also consider a tongue scraper to keep the tongue clear of any gunk or germs which might contribute to a stone forming, and regular gargling with a mouthwash or salt water solution might also help. It also goes without saying you should avoid smoking and excess alcohol, which may cause the mouth to become dry or might make the tonsil stones more likely to build up. For some people, an operation to flatten the surfaces of the tonsils may help to stop persisting problems with tonsil stones occurring, and this is called cryptolysis. Now, this can be done either by laser treatment or another type of treatment called cobalation cryptolysis. This might need a general aesthetic, but it's not available on the NHS. Finally, occasionally, removal of the tonsil, so a tonsillectomy, is recommended to prevent ongoing problems with the tonsils in general, but there are specific criteria for having a tonsillectomy, which your surgeon will discuss with you. And like any surgery, you need to weigh up the risks and benefits carefully. Thanks for watching, and until next time, bye.